Farming is a main source of livelihood for many Africans, particularly those in rural communities where 70% of that population depends on it for survival. But the continent is still described as the world's most food insecure continent. This should ordinarily not be so considering the vast natural endowments and good climatic conditions Africa is blessed with to farm enough food. Scientists believe this situation could change for better with improved agricultural technologies like biotechnology, which could alleviate poverty and boost food security. Welcome to AgriBiotech, a program focused on the significance of biotechnology to agricultural development in Nigeria. I am Lara Afolayo. For nine years of confined field trials for the Bt cowpea in parts of Nigeria, Farmers were an integral part of this process. They saw how the Bt cowpea performed just beside the conventional varieties on the field trial site. Now that the environmental release for the Bt cowpea has been approved and consent for the commercial release is being awaited, what do the farmers think about this development? That will be the trust of the program today as we feel the pulse of the Nigerian farming community on this issue. Let's now see trending agricultural biotechnology stories from parts of the world. The International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, IT, in Kenya has used the CRISPR genome editing method to target and destroy the viral DNA inside the genome of a banana variety called Gonja Manjaya. A scientist at the ITA, Lena Tripathi, whose team is using the CRSPR to make the bananas resistant to the virus and prevent reinfection, says the plan is to use this plant to breed virus-free plants for farmers. Tripathi, however, adds that the legal status of genome-edited plants in the West African countries where Gonja Manjaya is grown remains uncertain, adding that there are possible discussions about whether it requires legislation. Genome editing has been used to destroy a virus that locks inside many of the bananas grown in Africa. The John Innes Center, an independent center for research and training in plant and microbial science in England, is pioneering a new method which allows scientists to rapidly recruit disease-resistant genes from wild plants and transfer them into domestic crops. The technique called speed cloning has been developed by researchers in the UK, the United States and Australia to speed up the fight against pathogens that threaten food crops worldwide. It enables researchers to Search a genetic library of resistant genes discovered in wild relatives of modern crops so they can rapidly identify sequences associated with disease fighting capabilities. The new director of crop science at the University of Queensland, Professor Ian Godwin, wants scientists to speak out about the benefits of new genetic technologies such as genetically modified organisms and gene editing. He says the world should be able to take the best from the latest genetic technologies and from organic and agroecological farming practices. The crop science experts ask that it will help in the production of more sustainable and nutritious food to meet growing global demand in the face of challenges from pests and diseases, eroding soils, lack of water and climate change. The Bt cowpea variety was developed for farming use in Nigeria and like I said at the beginning of the program, some farmers were exposed to the ability of this variety to resist the Maruka pest which is a beans farmer's worst nightmare. On In Focus today, a number of these farmers including the president of the All Farmers Association of Nigeria, Kabir Ibrahim, will be sharing their thoughts on this beans variety. The marketability becomes uh, very low because when you have this pores caused by insects in the thing, it will be it will not even pass. The people in the market will say, "No, this one is not very good," so they you get nothing at all for it. But if you have a well-formed uh, crop, the thing is it will pass the tests 
for longevity. You do not have to preserve it using preservatives that can cause other problems. And therefore, you will sell it easily. And then you make more profit because the volume is small. You see, when, when a farmer plants, especially, you know, because it's seasonal, and the, the whole crop or a large percentage of it is destroyed, the tendency is the farmer will not go for that crop the following year. So whatever, you know, he is able to salvage from the damage is what is available. And then, you know, our farmers almost live from hand to mouth. So anybody who just does that and suffers this loss will be devastated. So they look for other crops that are able to withstand some of the effects of either the climate or insects or whatever. But with what we have now, you know, with the variety that we are going to have very soon, I am sure it will be very, very popular. The story will change. If a variety comes that will withstand Maruka infestation, then I assure you that there will be more farmers who will farm this crop. And then the food security situation in Nigeria will change because it's a very good source of protein. It will replace the mostly expensive today egg and chick, ch egg, chicken and uh, beef and then mutton. We are anxious to have it. It will transform our farmers from subsistence to prosperity. We will get to commerce. We will do commercial uh, production. Our, our lot will be better and the country will be better for it. As I told you, it's a very good alternative to protein that you get from other sources that are very costly. So it will be very, very popular with people. She won a BT cowpea. I've been there in tea. If we can get the BT cowpea variety, we will invest five times more yields because the maruka does not affect the variety. The BT cowpea only needs one or two sprays to take care of other insects, and the harvest is huge. The conventional cowpea takes four to five months before bringing forth yields, but the BT cowpea is ready for harvest in two to three months. These BT cowpea seeds on my hands are very large and look better than the conventional seeds we are used to. Maruka and other insects attack the conventional cowpea variety which I plant and the seeds come out smaller and fewer. If I can have access to the BT cowpea seeds, I will have a bumper harvest. In a hyper manner. And at this point, we take a quick break and AgriBiotech will continue shortly. Do stay. Did you know that genetically modified organisms, GMOs, are safe and do not pose any risk, hazard or danger to human, animal and the environment? Neither do they cause cancer, infertility, sterility, tumor or any adversity. The risk-safe use of GMO drugs like insulin, vaccine, rapid diagnostic test kits for malaria, HIV, hepatitis and so on. The safety of GMOs is certified by the World Health Organization, WHO, Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, European Food Safety Authority, EFSA, the National Academies of Science Globally, the Royal Society, UK, and over 110 prize Nobel laureates, GMOs are safe, effective, and certified by MBMA in Nigeria. Because earlier we saw some male farmers speaking on the BT Campy and why it is their preferred choice. But it's not just the male farmers who feel that way about the BT Campy. There are female farmers who hold such views as well. One of them is Patient Goku, a female Nigerian farmer who is eager to plant genetically modified crops. She will be joining me here on set in a bit to share her perspective on the approval for the environmental release of the BT Campy. Yeah, no, Nigeria, it's obvious Nigeria needs it to have population is about 180 million now and the projection is, is rapidly moving towards 200 million people. 
and there's obviously we can no no there is no way we can feed that huge population using only the hoe and knife and tractor type of uh, agriculture. We need to bring in technology to increase uh, our yield per hectare, for instance, for us to be able to feed close to 200 million people. We, we, the National Assembly passed the Bioceptive Bill, which brought about the establishment of an agency that is charged with the responsibility of uh, biosafety measures. And the House of Representatives, in its wisdom, is supporting the use of biotech in our agronomic practices. One, because of the fact that it has the potential of increasing our food production, especially against the backdrop of the fact that the government is now working hard to diversify our economy away from oil to agriculture. We need to employ modern technologies by way of biotech. One, to increase production, food production, not only to achieve food security, but also to have access that we can export And joining me on the program is Patience Kuku, a female farmer based here in Abuja. It's good to have you join me on the program. Thank you for having me. Okay, I'll start from here. The challenge is peculiar to farming in this part of the world. I've asked you before, but I'm asking you again. Mm -hmm. Oh, there, I, I would say that there are so many challenges that are peculiar to us. And, but, you know, farming all over the world is challenging. We must say that when you talk with farmers everywhere in the world, we would all have similar issues. So already food production, farming is a challenge. However, in some countries, you get a lot of support from, uh, from the government, which helps. You know, so being able to get subsidies or being able to get some additional funding, because funds are a lot of, I mean, it's a huge challenge for farmers. But being able to have that extra support helps. Um, in these parts, it's a lot more difficult in Nigeria to get the support that farmers need. So I would say that the key challenge will be getting access to funds and just generally getting the, the enabling environment to help farmers thrive. You would lose yields because you have this crop. The, the fall armyworm, for instance, it, it is all through the, the, the farming season. So we have it when the crop is early, it retards the growth. Then when you battle it all through, you find that it even eats the pollen. It will eat the tass I'm sorry, it will eat the tassels, which means you don't get pollen. It will go as far as eating the corn cobs, which means that you will have deformed cobs. You know, it will open the, 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 the cob the cob and it will have you will have fungus growing in it. At the end of the day there's so much devastation to the crop that you would lose money, you know, and you would pr you would produce um, generally unhealthy crop really. Okay, the fall armyworm is peculiar to maize. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the cowpea. Yes. How much, as a farmer, do you know about the maruka? The maruka is a terrible, terrible pest. I mean, personally, before now, I would never consider doing a large-scale cowpea farm because the maruka would, pest would consistently, persistently attack the cowpea crop. And you find that the farmer has to spray so many times in a season just to control that. And at the end of the day, the yields of cowpea generally are low in Nigeria because of the Maruka infestations. You farm cowpea? Yes. I farm cowpea, um, usually like most Nigerian farmers would do, is we use that, because it's a nitrogen-fixing um, legume, you would use that to help your soil. So at the end of your, your corn crop, you know, maybe a couple of weeks to the end, you would plant in some cowpea. Now, we do that not because of the commercial value, because, I mean, a lot of the time you have all the challenges, you have to spray a lot more. So we minimally plant cowpea, because at the end of the day, really, you, 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 you want to farm to make money. You don't want to lose money. Okay, could you share how bad the Maruka infestation has been for your cowpea plantation? 
okay, every time we've, I mean, when we've tried to grow cowpea, it is really bad. You find sometimes, you know, you would find that the, 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 the pods, when they form, sometimes you'd get empty pods, sometimes you see some funny colored cups, uh, pods, you will find it, there's just all kinds of things. It will eat the flowers, it won't flower. It's it just like the, the fall army worm is something that is, is devastating to the crop. So it just keeps going on and on, so to speak. And what do you know about the BT cowpea variety? Because it appears to be like mm -hmm. the only solution right now to fix you know, this maruka problem. Mm -hmm. what, what do you know about it? Okay, what I know is that the BT cowpea is resistant to maruka. Or at least you would need to spray only probably twice in a farming season. I mean, that's a lot of savings. And with the results of the yields in the trials, that's also a huge leap from what we already, what we currently have. So, I mean, with, with the BT cowpea, one would consider growing cowpea as, as a, a, a cash crop, so to speak, because currently, I mean, cowpea is basically smallholder farmers growing cowpea as a rotation in between the, their, cow, um, their corn or whatever at the end of the day. So, I mean, with the BT cowpea and the resistance to maruka, cowpea is definitely a crop to consider growing now. Okay, we have to leave it there okay. at this moment. I'll be right back. And my guest has been Patience Kuku, a female farmer based here in Abuja, the Nigerian capital. I'll take a quick break and the program will be back shortly. Do stay. Welcome back. The program is still Agribiotech and Patience is still here with me in the studio. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Okay, and just before we went on that break, we were talking about the BT cowpea. I, I wouldn't know if you were part of the trials that held, mm -hmm. you know, several years back. No, I wasn't part of the trials, but I have been speaking with farmers who were part of the trials to find out what their experience was, you know, with growing it. And they had glowing things to say about it. They said it was excellent. It was, it was a lot easier for them to grow the um, BT cowpea. They sprayed a lot less and the yields were a lot higher. Okay, and how has that helped change your perception as to how you would now make, you know, um, cowpea mm -hmm. a cash crop as yeah. away from when you used to use it to support other crops? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I, I would definitely right now consider growing cowpea on a large scale. Because, I mean, if you make the investment, you want to be able to get your returns back. So you want a crop that at the end of the day would give you the yields, you know, and, and so on. So for sure, we are looking at cowpea. Okay, and what specific benefits are you looking to get from that particular crop if you see the eventual commercial release? Oh, well, you know, the truth is we, in rotation, cowpea would definitely be an option. So um, f to maintain our soils, we don't want to continue to grow just one crop all through. So you don't want to do corn on corn on corn. So you want to be able to rotate corn on soybeans or on, on, on cowpea. So I mean, definitely in a production plan for us, cowpea would be a good option. And also because of the fact that um, cowpea is a major staple in Nigeria. So I mean, you want to grow a crop that can help we already have a lot of shortfalls with cowpea, and that's why the price of cowpea is, is getting higher by the day. So, I mean, in, in the past, you could say, you know, that you could buy cow beans, what we call the black-eyed beans. I mean, when you say cowpea, the, the average Nigerian is thinking, oh, what is that? You know, but it's our regular beans. So, I mean, before, beans prices were quite decent and reasonable, but as the years have gone by, and with, with low, low yields and low production, it's gotten worse. So I, I would say that, I mean, cowpea definitely is, is a crop that more farmers would be looking at. Okay. We only recently saw the approval for the environmental release of mm -hmm. that particular variety of beans. How did you receive that news? Well, I was ecstatic because, you know, I mean, 
without a doubt, I'm, I'm keenly waiting for more GM crops to be approved in Nigeria because I know the benefits to the farmer and to the nation at large. We would be growing healthier crop. And, and so I was really, really excited at the news that we are finally getting a food crop approved. I mean, if, if BT cowpea um, um, is, is allowed, we know that corn and, the, the, um, and rice and other very beneficial crops will follow. Okay. And what far-reaching implications do you think this could have for beans farming in Nigeria? Oh, this will revolutionize beans farming in Nigeria. What would happen is that people will grow a lot more cowpea because they would find that their efforts will bring results. They will get better yields. And I think that if you tested our cowpea currently and you test it in the future, you would find that we have a healthier crop because there will be less toxins from whatever sprays that we would have sprayed multiple times. Okay, you were privileged to have interacted with farmers who were part of the field trials mm -hmm. and you're quite enlightened. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know so very much about genetic modification mm -hmm. for agriculture. Mm -hmm. But for many others out there who may not have been part, you know, have had the opportunity to be part of these trials mm -hmm. or may not have been as exposed as you are to this particular area, what would be your message to them on this? Okay, my message to them would be basically that um, like we have done over years and trusted science to bring new improvements in medicine, in, in different areas of our lives, really, and we found them to be safe. It is just another application of science to crop production, and it has been tested. It is safe. Our average farmer in the fields in Nigeria, I mean, in the, our villages or wherever, they really don't understand science. So for them, it would be, is, this, is it going to kill me? You know, so it's not going to kill you. It's been tested. Our scientists in Nigeria worked on the BT cowpea and came up with a crop that is safe. And that also helps the farmer to stay safe. Because when you think about it, these are Nigerian farmers on the average spray without protective clothing. So no matter how safe a pesticide is or a herbicide, the instruction says wear protective clothing to spray it. And our farmers generally don't understand all that and cannot afford the protective clothing. So if you bring a crop, that means that the farmer will spray less. You are keeping also the farmer healthy. Okay, and what do you think, what advice as a farmer, I mean, you, 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 mm -hmm. you're, you're a field person, what advice would you give those who promote this technology in Nigeria and how they could better take this message to the grassroots where these farmers are. Mm -hmm. I think that lately I'm, I'm also realizing the need for farmers to get more involved. So a, f a few farmers who may understand the technology should try to get involved and understand what it is, be convinced about the technology, and then they can interface with other farmers who don't, I mean, who, who, who are not so educated and find ways to break it down. I mean, we can, we can use traditional rulers, people in the grassroots, to get the message across. Okay, and what would be your message to the authorities, I mean government, on how Nigeria could make the most of this technology mm -hmm. if we eventually see the approval for the commercial release of the BT copy in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. my, my, my advice would be the government put all its backing on GM crop. Reason being that we need to grow our yields, we need to feed our people, and we need to be able to export the crop. We are currently buying GM crop from countries who have improved their yields, who have fed their people and have a surplus. Let us have a surplus in Nigeria. So let's feed our people and let us also be able to export to get the, the, the forex that we so desperately need as a nation coming in from crop that we're exporting. Okay, and very quickly before you go, what will be your final thoughts on this? Well, my final thoughts is Nigeria is finally on the right track. With agriculture, we have waved around for so long, but I think that the country is on the right track, and if we stay on it, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. Thank you very much. Very well spoken. Thank you. Thanks for joining me on Thank the program. Thank you for having me. And my guest has been Patience Kuku, a female farmer, speaking on the benefits of the BT Kalpi for the Nigerian farming system and the economy as a whole. We'll take another break, and the program will return shortly. Do stay with us.
That was a female Nigerian farmer there speaking on the BT Kalpi and what its eventual approval for commercial release could mean for the Nigerian agriculture industry. Are you also a farmer with some perspectives on this technology or are there things you need clarification on? Kindly reach us through the email address agribiotech one at yahoo.com, send us tweets at agribiotech13 or post your views on the Facebook page Agribiotech on TBC. I am Lara Folayan. Bye-bye.